even in the 80s and 90s and I'd say early 2000s, there was a stigma about, you know, these books are for kids. They're not for mm -hmm. adults. But that, that stigma has gone away more based on how much everything has changed. And I mean, based on what comes out, based on the amount of content you have in film and television from the MCU to what DC is trying to do. God, I hope they do a movie universe properly this time. So, you know, The Boys, Walking Dead, um, everything else. So it's it's changed the perception of comics to where people, I think, are beginning to understand more that, hey, these aren't just for kids. And specifically, there are some you shouldn't let your child read, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what's your thoughts on that and the effect it's had over everything? You know, I don't... Um... I don't know that a lot of people who are super fans of The Walking Dead know that it came from a comic book. Ah. You know, I, 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 I don't know that a lot of people who are watching The Boys on Amazon know that it came from a comic book. I don't know that the people who are big fans and have put billions of dollars uh, out there for the MCU or, or whatever have ever picked up any of those comic books. So I don't know that there's that. I think if I, I think most people, the general public, yes, they're more aware that there's a character called Ant-Man and they're more aware that there's a character called uh, um, Ari Man, you know, for that matter, you, you know. Um, but I, I still think in a lot of ways, you know, I think comic books carry a stigma to, to the general public of, well, that's kind of kid stuff, you know, even though it's not right in, in a lot of ways. And but that's, you know, I, I that's my general just feeling. But uh, I I'm can be invalidated on that very easily. Am I am I totally wrong on that? What, uh, what well, and, and I'll say there's a large percentage of what you just said that's probably right. I don't know exactly what percentage as far as the population would know they're, you know, when they're watching The Walking Dead, that it is a comic book. But I know Dave, who runs This Month in Comics with me, you can check out the past episode we just dropped. It was phenomenal. We're getting all kinds of releases from this current month that just dropped. And several really mm -hmm. big crossovers are getting ready to drop, or just that, by the way, from a lot of different companies. Um, but he said he works at a comic book store. And at least once a week, and when he told me this, and my jaw half dropped. At least once a week, they have somebody come in and go, oh, they made Walking Dead comic books from the show? Right, 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 right. And if that's the way they come to the comic, if they go around the back way, fine. More power to them. You know, that's okay. Now, I will say, and I don't mean to cut you off. Are you good? No. Um, but I will say, I think that the geeks clearly won, the nerds clearly won over time. You know, all the filmmakers, you know, were raised on this stuff. All the, you know, the, 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 the top creators, you know, people, people know this stuff. I never thought I would walk in a Hallmark store and, you know, see a, a plushy Cthulhu doll, you know, uh, you know, out there for Christmas time, you know, it's, you know, it's a Cthulhu Christmas or something like that. So, you know, there's a there's a massive uh, greater knowledge of the pop cultureness of all this, which is cool and refreshing and and interesting. And I think that makes maybe the general public more receptive to, um, you know, to the, making those inquiries, to walking into that comic book shop. You know, hey, what do you what do you guys have? What what goes on in here? You know, or uh, but I, I still think there's, you know, there's there's a sense of not really fully understanding comics if you haven't glommed onto them, uh, you know, and been reading them for a while. Why do you think in that that people will still like there's still people out there like comic books are for kids? And my main point in saying that it should be clear that they're not is. Marvel is obviously comic books. The MCU is obviously comic books. That's mm -hmm. clear. The X-Men are comic books. That is like a known fact. Mm -hmm. Those films were coming out. Wolverine mm -hmm. came from a comic. They have the Deadpool films. They're R-rated. What the hell about Deadpool 
in those films is friendly for an eight-year-old, why at that point would you not go, oh, well, they must make adult comics? But it's still a character, and, you know, Deadpool movies are fun. You know, they're great. Um, but it's still a guy in a garish costume, dropping wisecracks, doing ultra-violence, right? You know, you compare the ultra-violence that, that, uh, that uh, Deadpool does in those movies with... Um, with uh pick a grizzly scene you know from i don't know goodfellas or something like that maybe you know where you know where they're beating the shit out of the guy you know in the bar and it's still a different kind of quality that somebody could interpret and say ah that's just kind of like goofy you know comic book stuff um you know i work my first job at marvel was well not my first job but my my second job you know, was being the assistant editor and then an editor at the division they had called Epic Comics. So Epic was the more mature imprint at that time. It's largely forgotten at this point. But we were doing very mature comics, you know, in theme, sometimes in events, certainly in production value. Um, and there was one especially called Moonshadow, which Jam, uh, uh, Mark Dematis and a guy named Jay Muth had created. Um, which was just a tone poem. It was like this lyrical, almost like Little Prince um, uh, uh, coming of age story, you know, semi-supernatural, semi-fantasy. Um, and it was fully painted. Jay Muth was a, is, you know, a, a painter of great uh, ability. And um, when people would say, I don't read comic books or I don't think comic books have anything to offer, at that point, that would be the thing I would hand them. Right. Not because I worked on it, but because it wasn't what they expected at all. Right. And that broke them down from where they thought a comic book was to the, they think people need a gateway drug like that. Right. Sometimes. And then they may come around to the other stuff or they may never. But they do need a gateway drug that sort of gives them permission to be entertained in this different way with the different rhythms that a comic book has, the panels, the pages, you know, the sequence of captions and word balloons. It, it's different and it needs something that brings you in. And that may not always be Magneto, you know, gosh, I conquer the world. This <laughs> That's fun, right? Um, I've got a fun scene in this where I've got, you know, a good mon in this black armor story where I got a, the villain, you know, does a marvelous bit of monologuing, if I do say so myself. But that's not going to be the gateway drug for, like, everybody, right? I think it's going to make Daredevil fans have a ball. I think it's going to make, I think people are going to enjoy the hell out of it. But um, but I'm not going to hand that book over to somebody who's never read a comic book and say, I think this is what's going to get you want reading comic books. My story about Daredevil. No. So just out of curiosity, man, as someone who's read and worked in the industry for a while, is there a comic like something current? You know, we'll say, give me, I'll say the past five to ten years that's mm -hmm. come out that you would really hand someone that had never read comics that sticks out as just, look at this. You know, um, I don't read everything. And um, I, well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty eclectic in what I pick up. But two come to mind. It's a great question. Um, one is, uh, let me make sure I got the the title of this right. Because um, uh, I read them, you know, not knowing what they were going to be, and they just like blew me away. Like in terms of like I thought both originality and accessibility. So one was this book, Harrow County which is um, sort of these moody, um, uh, you know, you know it? Well, hey, can you hand me that real quick? You, you got you got it right there, right? You know, uh, uh, um, well, this... the wife is actually in the middle of volume two. And I there you go. OK, intend. It's just funny that this is the book you literally like she's she's literally in the middle. Yeah, this is the omnibus volume. Literally, two. literally. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's currently so what point, she's reading in um... capitalism in Harrow County. So. Yeah. Totally accessible art, really simple, but also, you know, very evocative. Um, you know, the 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 main characters are are very approachable and you can you can understand their journey. And then the supernatural otherworldly qualities of it 
you know, feel both like something I kind of understand. There's a little bit of Blair Witch, you know, sort of feeling to some of it a little bit, but also very much their own thing. So I think that it, 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 those emotional, those human, those otherworldly qualities represent it in really clear storytelling too, right? It, it's disarmingly simple, right? It looks like almost too simple compared to uh, black armor, you know, for example, but, <laughs> but it draws you in. And once you're in and once you're into the rhythms and once you're into the characters and once you're into, oh my God, you know, she's threatened by this or she's going to lose that or her best friend and her aren't, you know, dealing with each other. And then there's this awful monster that is also something else. Um, it, it, it really connects. And I think that was a that would be a great one. And then um, the other one I just read, um, which is a book called uh, The Kill Lock, um, which is um, this super intriguing uh, uh, story. I don't have the author's name and the artist's name uh, on the top of my head, but um, it was basically a an all robot galaxy, right? Where these four robots uh, to punish to punish robots who have gone off the you know, the, the criminal end of the society, they are joined as a quartet into something called the kill lock. So if one dies, they all die. So then you're bound together with these four other strangers. So you've got, you've got a warrior one called the Wraith. You've got an artisan one who's sort of like the scientist creator. You've got a laborer and you've got one that's called the unfinished. And that's all their names are. You know, they don't have cool little C-3PO names or something like that. But, um, the re it's it's science fiction so it's it's you know it's got that entry point which is a little bit different than than superheroes the art is very striking and and mostly you know easy to kind of follow it's funny as shit right the artisan uh, scientist one is brutally sarcastic and i literally laughed out loud which with a comic book is not something i think you always do so they're each distinct characters the intrigue is there it's got an amazing twist at the end, and uh, the the creator paid off every moment he set up, you know, in the sense of like like fury, intention, uh, uh, um, caring, you know, and you quickly went from these nameless characters in my mind to really caring about them and wanting to see what was going on. So uh, again, a, a kind of an unexpected entry point, which I don't think would scare. I think Harrow County is a lot a lot closer to the introductory thing but I, I like this one a lot too man all i know is i'm glad there's at least one of the three things you've added to uh me wanting to read it's already in my damn house like <laughs> I, I appreciate you mentioning something that's already here so i just don't have to buy more shit and jesus man what are you trying to do to me and then you got me like sitting here talking about this daredevil story and i'm just like the more you talk about it, the more I'm like, damn it, I need to talk to Dave. Dave's the, <laughs> Dave's the guy I tell to add stuff to my full list, you know? Right, right. So, no. Yeah. So, so, so since, since you've added so many things, I just have to say, if you really enjoyed Haro Candy and from what I know of it, uh, have yeah. you read Something is Killing the Children? I've, I, I did, began to read it, and it didn't catch me. I don't know why. You know, like I read the first uh, couple and sometimes it's where you are. Right. I recognize the talent behind it. I like his work um, and uh, uh, the writer's work. And um, but something about it just it didn't didn't catch me, you know, so I like it. it, it I, I might go back to it later, but I just didn't didn't want to continue at that point in time. Didn't dislike it. I didn't like say, oh, this is, sh you know, I've read books <laughs> like that. And I'm like, but n not in that way at all. But, you know, what we were talking about before, if it's not grabbing you right away, I got I a got hundred other things I should be looking at. Uh, yeah, I got a fair stack back here I actually need to get yep. to. We're not going to, we're not going to get into that. In fact, it, <clears throat> you just added to it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Damn it, man. I don't have time for all this shit. It's finite and it's annoying. I swear. Like, and, 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 you, and can I say, like, 
it, at least this interview hasn't been as heavy as your three wishes, bro. Jesus. Oh, sorry, man. But that's that's a you, that was a you you asked you asked and it was like you know first I was like oh but when this you know and then like hope those came to my head and I was like oh fuck I guess you're asking good questions so you got to expect um I mean real I mean, answers I did, was my mind you you definitely uh, gave some of the heavier answers I think um for the three wishes if y'all want to go check that out go to Patreon hopefully. Hopefully by the time Dan's interview is up, I've got the Patreon up to date where I'm dropping all the current questionnaires. I know as of the recording, there's like 55 or 60 up there. I don't know. I don't it's a bloody pain in my ass to keep track of all of this. You know, I got a lot of shit. <laughs> at it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got to mark it too. It's there. You got to, you got to, you know. I'll tell you the best thing. The best thing you can do for yourself is is invest in or get one of these like like programs that you can like post stuff weeks ahead of time. You know, like set yourself up for like uh, like there's one called Hootsuite and another one's called Publer and I'm sure there's a bunch of others. But you basically set everything up for social media weeks ahead of time, and then it just automates the the hell out of it, and then you don't have to worry about it. That's the next step, but, like, damn, when I initially started this show, for the first, like, 50 episodes or so, I, one, didn't have the Patreon up at all, and two, wasn't making thumbnails for anything. <laughs> right, right, right. So, I had some catching up to do, you know you what do, I mean? You do, you like, do. You've like got a, they, you got a whole content library, though, that you can work with. It's great. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff you can work with. Yeah, thankfully I've caught up all the thumbnails and everything now. Like I said, I just got about ten questionnaires to put out as far as on the Patreon, and then I'll actually be dropping them. Hopefully, even before the interviews drop, so people will be able to go on the Patreon and be like, "Oh, he's got that guy coming up because the questionnaire is there." Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I mean, I'll post that on other social medias as well because it's kind of piss poor job. But I'd be doing promoting the show if I wasn't being like, "Hey, look, I got this guy coming up, and here's his pre-show questionnaire. You can go check out all this madness," you know. But I. Man, you're gonna have me picking up a Daredevil book. Eric has got, or Heather's got me picking up a fucking Star Trek book. Fucking Eric has got me picking up X23. Like, <laughs> I didn't think it's it nice would to be surprised by things that you don't know about. So, I, I did, that way, I didn't think it would become expensive to run this show because it would like feed my con. I should have known better the comic book geek I am. Like, it's. It's ridiculous, but I do think it's funny in the fact to me because one of the things I don't know if you know Erica Schultz, she's uh, she did the uh, Deadliest Bouquet as well as uh, X Men Deadly Regenesis and or X Twenty Three Deadly Regenesis and um, Hollow's Eve uh, for Marvel mm -hmm. recently. I think it's funny what you're doing with Daredevil is very similar with what she did with X Twenty Three as far as taking the character and doing a story. It's not current. It's dated at a, at a different time pace. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? When you're doing that process, man, you, have, you haven't had to come across anything where you're like, hey, you can't do that because that negates something that was done in the future with Daredevil. And how do you go about making no, sure that you don't? Not, not that way. Um, there was a weird thing where both had me and the editors sort of scratching our heads, but we finally had to kind of just shrug our shoulders and move on from it where we we did have a bit and remember this takes place as you said in the past right the marvel past yeah like where we had something going on where another editorial office wanted to use a similar incident or character in current day continuity right and because of what we and there wasn't a conflict we weren't doing something that was negating what they were going to do or something we were going to say oh well it was just the way we were using this in this other story because they're going to come out i think around the same month or or whatever um and, and they had more control over the bit or the character um you know they they kind of uh, indirectly directly were yeah we don't want you to do that um, and I was like, but it's all make-believe. 
it's all make believe and and <laughs> and it's and it's not going to and it's not you know there's no domino chain from what we're doing to what they're doing you know there's no like by doing this we're not negating what they're doing or or anything um but it just you know it became one of these uh push me pull me things and i just basically said i'll i i have an idea of how to fix it for our from our point of view and just get us out from under this so we did that and we just moved on from it it just wasn't worth the hassle and i think that's something you have to realize at certain times with the story it's it's you have to make sure you're not giving yourself more of a hassle than it's necessary it makes me curious when people are working over at marvel how often that happens to where there's a i mean i would hope most of the most of the people are professional enough especially the writers that they know that you know you are worried whether it's marvel or dc you're working in a sandbox and you can't come in and dump a thousand tons of sand and then just walk away you have to make sure mm -hmm this sandbox is still able to be played with with other people because it's a community sandbox for certain from writers to fans yeah. and everything else I, I think it all depends also on where you are as a as a creator and probably a human being and and such you know where i can remember uh back in the day getting my back up about what i would look at now is very minor things and digging my heels in and you know pissing and moaning and and acting like it was going to, you know, change the the course of, you know, all the publishing history if I didn't get my way or do things a certain way. <laughs> um, and now maybe it's, you know, again, 20 years of working in advertising where you are in a service industry and and I've become much more, I think, sort of solution oriented in the sense of I've had the rug pulled out from under me and yet still had to produce many times so i've become much more capable of not shrugging my shoulders and saying well i don't care that's not the case it's a matter of okay well here's our new parameters today and here's a solution and oh what you know what maybe that solution actually at, at, you know gets us someplace better um or more interesting so so far that's been the case on this you know maybe there is a point at which I would hope nothing it, from now until the end of this particular four issues happens that is just anything except good things. I can't imagine anything happening right now that would be like a big game changer or throw everything up in the air. I'm saying that again, knocking on wood. Um, uh, but, you know, so far it's just been all solution oriented. Well, let me offer some wood for you. I, I agree. Thank you. I don't want to Thank see you. because everything. Everything that you mentioned seems very, very interesting. And like I said, I think it was an intriguing time with the Daredevil character that that got way too much shit just for... He has armor, and he's, he's like, literally, if there was any person... Any person on the planet, that if they were capable of going and doing what Daredevil did and then could have that too, they would do it. That's all I'm saying. Because, yeah. you know... It's less and, bruises and, maybe, and broken bones. And maybe I'm fooling myself again. I could be, but, you know, I, and I'm only getting the reactions that I'm getting. But, you know, the reactions since they announced it, you know, seem to be very, very positive and very interested. Although it's all, you know, it, it it's all, uh, um, I guess, you know, an equal balance. You know, I think the first 12 minutes after the press release came out, you know, I got like all these like, great, congratulations, can't wait to see it. At literally minute 12, like, you know, the headline was, you know, uh, uh, so so writer from 90s brings back worst costume ever. <laughs> so never let your ego like get ahead of you, like at any point. I've seen that headline. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, I don't I don't know that that's the worst Daredevil costume ever. Um, especially if you go into all the alternate realities, I'm pretty positive there's a worse one somewhere by far. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember, God, now you, you got me trying to remember his Age of Apocalypse one because I don't remember it being very good if memory serves me proper. I don't know, God, I'd have to, I'd have to go find a, a picture of Matt Murdock from, uh, right. from that and actually look at it because it's, it's been a while since I've read The Age of Apocalypse, but I know he was a character within that. But, I mean, there's been so many iterations. 
of Matt Murdock. I don't see how people could think that is the worst costume. It's funny. I think it's just because I, I don't think it's the fact that it's the worst costume. I think a lot of people just for some reason really got annoyed with the fact that he was trying to protect himself physically. And I don't understand that. The dude's already blind and doing what he's doing. <laughs> you know? It could look could look a lot worse for a blind guy. Yeah. Um, and, Seriously, you know, like but it, it's been it's been hanging in Marvel's closet for literally 30 years now at this point. So I think it's coming back at a at a at a time through the visual stylings of an artist who's you know got a great handle on it. Uh and um, you know, I think we're doing a story that's gonna that's gonna let it play out just you know it's not it's not about the armor in the sense that it's every minute every panel he's saying boy i'm glad i've got this you know, this extra padding good thing i've got this thing on my shoulder good thing i've got this thing here um you know that would be asinine but uh i i think we put him through the ringer and he gets to you know come out the other side a, a bit uh because of this and uh and i think we're just telling a fun story you know that's that's the that's the most you can kind of hope for now i want at least like a two or three page bit from daredevil with you guys doing it it's just like whole fight sequences and every time he gets hit he's like oh man thanks for that pad right there i'm glad i installed yeah. that. <laughs> i mean i probably got i know i got at least one panel that he does that just because i've got to touch points on some things but <laughs> it's certainly not i could see i could see the worst of the worst thing where you know, it, it it would be a ridiculous scene of doing exactly that. You know, my goodness, fortunately, the protective fabric, you know, here that I manufactured is, you know, done this. But you got to next, next next series. It'd be a funny piece of satire to just throw in like in like when the trade comes out, you know, like here's like three pages of just him kind of mocking ostensibly everybody that had a problem with that costume by by oh. just being an ass about it like oh man like you said thanks for this little piece of padding right here Ooh, those knee pads really really helped that landing and well, <laughs> I, I actually uh, the last time i wrote daredevil the last time before this was daredevil 380 which was the last issue of daredevil before it was relaunched with uh, joe casada and jimmy palmiotti right so 380 was the last issue they asked me and lee weeks to come back and do the finale right that the editor liked what we did and said come back so we did this uh this this story and there actually is a scene in there because it's all told from different people's perspectives you know it's kind of like a usual suspects uh, sort of story and uh, there is a scene precisely where i do that that whole bit where everybody's perception of his costume becomes more and more outlandish to the point where he's wearing like a an Aryan man suit and you know and he says now I am death devil or something you know and you know he's beaming repulsor rays out of his hand and <laughs> it just gets more and more <coughs> ridiculous so um I I got ahead of myself uh, 27 years ago so <laughs> fair enough it makes me want to see now what you need to do next is you need to take, and I don't know which one is considered the worst, but you need to figure out what is considered the worst Iron Man armor. <laughs> and yeah, bring that in. Yeah, and then just exactly. bring that in for a four-issue miniseries. It would be mm -hmm. perfect. But Dan, it has been a pleasure, man. It really has. I definitely want to bring Good. you back later for a pan con. You know, yeah, get love your it. opinion on love some it. madness with a pack of creators that you may or may not know. I don't know. But I will say for everybody out there, one, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. So if you have enjoyed yourself, what I want you to do is I want you to get a nice werewolf, like a good doll someone, you know, one that's like pretty chill, you know, and then I want you to send it Dan's way with the G.I. Joe space capsule. Man, I remember that toy. It was dope, right? Phenomenal, phenomenal choice. And just a box of three musketeers. But again, make sure that werewolf's like chill. Okay, mm -hmm. give it some of them Cheech and Chong CBD gummies that I see advertised every third damn post on Twitter because mm -hmm. apparently that's the only advertising <laughs> Elon Musk can get with how much he dicked everything up, right? But just yeah, like I yeah. said, 
give him some of the Cheech and Chong CBD uh, gummies and, you know, send him on his way to Dan for to get him that G.I. Joe capsule and a box of Three Musketeers. Now, if for some reason, like, you're like, man, fuck Dan. He's annoyed me. And I don't know why he would have, man. If, if he is, if he did, I'm like, sorry about your luck, but that's what happened. And I don't know how you made it all the way to the end of the interview to find this bit out if he's annoyed you for that matter. I never thought about that since I do this at the end. If somebody's really annoyed by the guest the whole time, I don't think they've stuck around till the end to find out this end bit. But if you have, and again, he's annoyed the crap out of you, what I want you to do is send a Baba Yaga? Yeah? What the yeah. hell is a Baba Yaga? Baba Yaga is the famous... Um... Uh, uh, Russian, I think, um, uh, myth, you know, story, you know, scary story about the uh, uh, the witch who lives in the hut with like the chicken legs that kind of walks around. You know, if you ever, you know, it's been been it's been brought to life in like a number of different ways. But it's sort of like the the wickedest witch of the wickedest witches who lives in this horrifying old shack that can walk around on these legs, you know, and then kind of comes after you if you wander into the forest. So it's uh, it's pretty demented stuff. I probably didn't have enough of the gummies. All right, so so I sent him a Baba Yaga, the, just with the smell of Burger King Vince just emulating from her right uh, through the door. I don't think Dan will be a fan. Not that I think anybody wants, like, Burger King Vince fanned into their house, man. That's, like, Oof. yeah, I wouldn't want, there's no fast, the only fast food restaurant like that I could think of you could fan the smell of into my house is, like, you could do that with Baskin Robbins, and I'd be fine, but that's not mm -hmm. really a fast food restaurant. That's just pure, like, candy sugar. delectable yeah. <laughs> bullshit. And then cold sugar. And, yeah, yeah, and then I'd end up fucking 400 pounds and not even... Like, I didn't have neck bearded, and we don't support Common Gate over here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the questionnaire. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go down, click them links for Dan. Click that Patreon. Check out some pre-show questionnaires. Check out every other link that's there. That's there. There's a lot. Besides that, just three things, right? One, give it a thumbs up. Two, have a good night. And three, get your Comic Con. Take care, y'all. Mark McKenna here. Check me out at www.markmckennaart.com. This is Alex Segura, author of Secret Identity. My name is Sander Sarate. This is Laverne Kinjerski. This is John Ward, creator of Scratcher and a whole bunch of other crap. It's Jason Copeland, uh, artist and writer of Full Tilt. You are listening to The Questionnaire. Say that again. You gotta check out The Questionnaire. He's been super fun and entertaining, honestly. He's like, <laughs> just like hanging out with friends and chilling. This, this, it's cool, man. I love it. It's, it's nice. You need to check out the questionnaire. I mean, you do. Have a fall format you want, or even a carrier pigeon. New episodes every week. Jeez, I'm going to write that shit down. I love y'all, and it's a hell of a quest.